This is a difficult video, but I think it's an important one. What do you do when somebody you respect or used to respect is accused of sexual harassment, workplace harassment, fraud? How do we reconcile this fall from grace? I don't have all of the answers, but this is how I'm thinking about it. Jim Watson is a racist. Richard Feynman was a sexist pig, and Albert Einstein was a terrible husband and father. Giants in science who each made indelible contributions to our understanding of the world had some pretty ruinous personal traits. And while some of these transgressions came to light only after their death, others were known at the time. Today, it seems that each week, descriptions of sexual harassment, of Me Too impropriety, and of workplace harassment, questions surrounding data fabrication and fraud, all of these are unsettling our perceptions of our modern day scientific giants. So how do we make sense of this? How do we reconcile their behavior with their contributions to science? One way might be to look towards art. Artists have long grappled with the tension between their giants, personal and professional lives. Picasso is a misogynist. Gauguin married three underage Tahitian girls, giving each of them syphilis. And Wagner was an anti-Semite who performed for Hitler. Historian and former curator Sarah Green asks, can we hate the artist, but love the art? In an episode of the same title, part of PBS's Digital Studios web series, The Art Assignment, she tries to find the balance with this tension and ultimately concludes that the shades of gray are many, though the choice of whether to entertain those shades varies from individual to individual. Now, you might argue that this is just some form of creative cognitive dissonance. Is it possible to love the art and hate the artist? But I really like Picasso, you might find yourself thinking. He invented cubism, but maybe less so when you read grim perspectives of his behavior. But the point is not a thorough takedown of the giants to fully expose their atrocious behaviors and to cancel Picasso, because we can't really know all of the details. Instead, we need to hold these two opposing ideas in mind at the same time. And after all, this is the test of a first-rate intelligence, according to F. Scott Fitzgerald. Hated artists did not create art despite their offenses, nor because of them. There's no counterfactual universe that exists to know if an unoffending Picasso would have invented cubism. All we know is that there's only one Picasso and he was deeply broken. And despite our 21st century cancel culture, artists are not calling for museums to hide away his works because the story of 20th century art cannot be told without him. But whitewashing, glossing over, or simply ignoring his abuses does everyone a disservice. Now, we can better understand Picasso's contributions if we can hold these seemingly two incompatible truths in our mind at once. Perhaps we can do the same with our scientific giants. Some of them, too, are broken, and their behavior is unexplicable. It's not as uplifting as a straightforward tale about some visionary creative whose flaws were only in service to its genius, but is more honest. When we look back upon the giant scientific contributions, the uncomfortable narrative of their transgressions acknowledges the cost of these discoveries and perhaps moves us collectively forward towards a culture where caring for people is more important than any scientific purpose. Now, the example I paint here is about scientists asking the question, can you love the science but hate the scientist? And we draw upon examples from art using the same question, can we love the art but hate the artist? But honestly, this is broadly applicable. Insert your own field and your own experience here and the exact same questions remain. So what to do? Is this just some convenient cognitive dissonance? in order to protect the thing that we used to think? Because we all know updating our prior beliefs is a difficult thing to do. But go ahead, let me know, I'm sure you will, what you think of this.